Britain's most decorated female Olympian has announced her retirement from cycling just four months before the Paris 2024 Games. Now, she won five Olympic golds and seven world titles in her career. This is what she's had to say. I always felt I'd know when it was time to step away, and it is now the time. Cycling has given me so much, including a husband, and I've always been immensely proud to represent my country. It's been the honour of a lifetime, she says. I know a lot of people will focus on the Olympics and the medals, but my biggest takeaway is the impact cycling has allowed me to have on other women and girls. Throughout my career, people have often told me how I inspired them to get active or get on a bike, and I'd like that to be my legacy. A girl from Chessent that got the nation moving. In terms of what's next, who knows? I have so many exciting projects and plans to look forward to. After spending more time with my family, I want to look at all the possibilities. Laura, the cyclist, has allowed me to connect with people and show my big part of my personality. But it isn't all of me. There's a lot more to show, and I'm excited to share that with people. Now, Team GB chef de mission Mark England paid tribute to Laura, saying this, Laura encapsulates the many values of Team GB, and it has been a personal pleasure to watch her compete for Team GB over the past decade. Laura was a history maker from the moment she took to the track in London back in 2012, right through to Tokyo, where she became our most decorated female Olympian and the first British woman to win gold medals in three consecutive Olympics. Laura was a source of inspiration, he says, to her Team GB teammates, and I am sure she will continue to be so as she navigates the next chapter in her life. British Olympic Association Chair Sir Hugh Robertson added this tribute. Dame Laura Kenny has been our greatest ever female Olympian and a huge part of cycling and Team GB's success at London, Rio and Tokyo. However, as well as being an outstanding athlete, she's also been a wonderful personality. We will all miss her enormously and wish her and her family all the very best for the future. All right, let's get more on this and join our senior reporter, Geraint Hughes, as you can see now. Good afternoon to you, Geraint. Good to see you. There was an expectation she would compete at the Olympics this summer, wasn't there? So tell us more about why she's taken the decision and taking it now. I think it was probably uh, almost like a, 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 a time frame, a window of time where she had to make a decision either to go for it in terms of getting to Paris or whether to withdraw. Two things for her, her own well-being and sanity, but also as well for the team. You know, one thing you can say about Dame Laura Kenny, yes, she's an individual athlete with ridiculous amount of medals. I'll go through those in a minute. But she was a team player. She was part of the British cycling family, part of the Olympic family as well, along with her husband, when Jason, when he was competing as well. And in terms of Laura qualifying uh, for the Olympics, pretty much, I think, a last chance would come next month at a Nations Cup track uh, meeting in Canada. Uh, she'd have had to get the points, accrue the points there, that would enable her to qualify for Paris 2024. Plus, the British um, sort of cycling team, the squad, it's really strong. There's some serious young talent there as well. They're going to be going into Paris in strong shape with or without Dame Laura Kenny. So I think we're in that time frame where she had to make a decision one way or the other. I think what Laura is making key is that the decision just came from her heart as much as anything else, as long as, uh, along with her head, that family comes first. She gave birth to her second child uh, eight months ago. She's got two kids now and just trying to be Dame Laura Kenny, the cyclist, the professional athlete, the Olympian, and be another, you know, a high-performing Olympian as, Olympian as well. Combining that with being a mother of two children, she didn't want to go through all that entails again. She's given some sort of semblance of, uh, I think she called it carnage, how it was traveling around the world with her first son, Albie. You know, she made it look easy with her and her husband, Jason, maybe to the wider public, but behind the scenes, it was a very, very challenging operation. And, and it came with serious heartache, as she's alluded to. Uh, and I don't think she wants to go through that again as well. So that's sort of the heart thing, the head side kind of thing, uh, her performance. She she only came, you know, back into the, into training relatively recently. She's got this, would have had this event coming up next, uh, next month as well. The squad is strong. And ultimately, the decision is not necessarily hers. I think it's going to be a gentleman we're going to be speaking to soon, who's the, the head of the British Cycling, you know, the performance director, Stephen Park, as well. So there are a number of factors at play, but she's 31. She's got nothing to prove to everyone. And I said I'd go through some stats. 
So write these down because they're very, very impressive. Five-time Olympic champion, seven-time world champion, 14-time European champion, and I believe, if I've got this right, a two-time Commonwealth gold medalist as well. I hope I've got that right, but that is some list. That is some, uh, that is some cabinet full of medals that uh, Dame Laura Kenny will have, in addition to her husband, Jason Kenny, as well, who's the, you know, the greatest uh, sort, of, sort of Olympian in terms of medals of all time as well. So you, I, I think you can fully understand the decision she's made and why she has made it at this moment in time. Yeah, I can't agree with you more there. And like you say, it's not even just a cabinet, isn't it? It's a trophy room. Uh, she is the most successful, isn't she? Female Olympian. It's been an incredible career. Do you feel she's just going to be regarded as one of the all-time greats of any sport? Easy answer to that question, yes. And perhaps a, a greater legacy will, will be is... Um, the what we hope is the continuing emergence of, of, of women's sport and how we get girls into sport as well and, and don't lose that drop off of, of teenage girls around the age of 14, 15, 16 because we're still getting huge drop off in the number of girls that play sport. You see somebody like Laura Kenny, Dame Laura Kenny, and that does more good than most when young girls see somebody like Laura Kenny succeeding. She's got the most affable personality. She smiles, she laughs, she's always happy when she's in front of a camera or whether she's competing as well. She always makes sure that she's very, you know, she's very, very bubbly as well. Also as well as she's a little pocket rocket. She's an incredible physical specimen as well. If you want to just break it down to sort of an athlete, she is absolutely phenomenal. She looks absolutely, I suppose, tiny on a bike, get this incredible power. I remember speaking some years ago, actually, I think it might have been at the Rio Games or somewhere around there, where a coach was just telling me just it's sort of the, the, the twitch fibres uh, in her legs and her, her upper legs as well. And that comes down from natural talent, but also the way that she applied herself in training as well. A phenomenal... Uh, a trainer as well. I, you know, I'd imagine at times in any elite sport there are sort of gripes between uh, athlete and coach as well. But as far as you can go, probably a little bit of a dream because she had a fantastic attitude. She she propelled her sport uh, beyond cycling as well. Very very affable. And I think the wider thing I'm trying point I'm trying to make is a lot of girls and and young women saw Laura Kenny and they saw well, well I could do that. I could get involved in sport. What a nice lady as well. And things like that do go a long way. And I think Laura's initial legacy will be something like that. I know she wants to stay within the sport in somehow. I don't think she. She wants to go into coaching like her husband, but I know she wants to be in, in, involved in the sport in some way uh, in the future as, as well. And I think with that attitude that she has when she was competing and when she was outside competition as well, uh, it could be a really good thing, not just for cycling, but for Olympic sports and sports in general. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you, Garen. And she's inspired an older woman as well to get on the bike. Stay there, Garen, because we're going to bring in, as you alluded to, British Cycling Performance Director Stephen Park. Good to see you, Stephen. Just first and foremost, when did you get the news that Laura was going to retire? Well, we've been in conversation with Laura for some time, um, you know, through the um, through the time that she's had off. Uh, having her second child and then back into training and supporting her through that period. So we always knew that there was a chance that this might be the outcome. Um, and I was speaking to, uh, well, as recently as this weekend, but um, this big discussion really last week when we were thinking about uh, the process that was going to happen as we go through towards our final qualification event in Canada, as Gerard was referencing a second ago. Stephen, I'm going to pick up with you there because I'm glad I got that right, that it was that Nations Cup event in Canada. But I think what we all wanted is just kind of how tough a decision was it for Dame Laura, but also in consultation with you is, listen, we know, we know that high-end elite sport we know your sport has has a heart, but you've got to, to agree, be ruthless as well. You've got to have the best possible team to go to Paris and, and get as many medals as possible. Just how tough a decision was this from performance, as, as well as Laura alluding to her family commitments? The, you know, Laura knows better than most um, what's required to win Olympic medals in the sport of cycling. We are really fortunate that we have um, a, an embarrassment of riches in... Um, in terms of women in the women's endurance space, getting into the team is very much the hardest 
hardest part. And Laura knows that the game is moving on all the time. So she has to be in the form of her life just to make the team before we then talk about whether she's then going to be competitive for medals. Um, and I think that ultimately, as you were referencing, she's been balancing that with the challenges of being able to take make that time, that commitment, that huge sacrifice that all Olympians make, um, but to take that time away from her family. And she was able to do that and be fully applied after her first child, come back for Tokyo, uh, win that fantastic gold medal in the Madison with with Katie Archibald and the silver in the team pursuit, but when it came to it, it was it was one big pull, probably too many to be able to come back in good enough time to be able to put herself in the form that she knew she needed to be in, ultimately to to get that selection. So I think uh, emotionally, probably really quite a hard decision for her to make, but also probably one that I suspect that she is really quite relieved about having made because her, her her head's telling her what she needs to do. And as she's making that, she's she's feeling maybe like that, that relief. And that's someone who's, you've got to remember, has been applied, fully applied for 15 years of her life where cycling has been absolutely everything that she's done. Um, and she knows what's required. She puts a huge amount in um, and leaves nothing to chance. And that's why she's been quite so successful. Yeah, talk us through that, Stephen, because, you know, her highlight's got to be winning those two gold medals uh, at the Olympics. But can you just put into context what she's actually done for cycling during her career? I think, you know, Garen reeled off some of the performances, but when you look at it in perspective, there are only five British Olympians who have won five or more gold medals in any sport. There are only 20 Olympians who have won three gold medals or more in any sport. She's the only woman to have won more than three gold medals in British uh, Olympic history. I think uh, when I last looked in partnership with her husband, Jason, who's the most decorated British Olympian, if they were a country, they were just outside the top 10 medal winning countries in Olympic history. So, you know, her record uh, speaks for itself. But there's no doubt that, you know, those performances and her bubbly personality and her engaging personality uh, in the media on recent, more recently, I suppose, on social media has done wonders for, um, for the sport and for inspiring youngsters to get involved. And we know that actually many of the riders that are in our programme fighting out for places to go to Paris this summer one of the people that's inspired them was watching Laura in that home games in 2012 that, of course, inspired our whole nation. Uh, and those fantastic days in the summer of 2012 where she was, um, you know, one of the, the pinups of that event. And um, she's she's gone on to inspire many, many people, but not just youngsters, but also, as you're referring yourself, um, you know, plenty of the rest of us to get out on our bike and enjoy everything that the joy of cycling has to offer. Yes, I love your little banner behind. You can't buy happiness, but you can buy a bike. And that's pretty close. It brings me a lot of happiness as well when I get on mine. Um, look, in terms of her, of what she did, because she came back to the top level, didn't she, after she'd had Albie in 2017, which is a fantastic thing for, for young mums, perhaps, as well. So how much of an inspiration has she been in terms of that, the fact that you can do something even though you've had a baby? Yes, well, it's, it's becoming more common, but... Um certainly something that we've tried hard within cycling to support um, uh, young families. And I think the fact that she's, you know, I think perhaps historically across sport, there was very much a view that the, the level of sacrifice required meant that it was practically impossible to do that and, and to be competitive. But a number of athletes, um, Jess Ennis Hill, Laura, um, in this case, have have shown that that's not necessarily the case and quite often that they can come back and be stronger. And in fact, um, just this weekend, we were in Hong Kong and Katie Marchant was part of the gold medal winning team sprint team. And she too has just returned from having a child. And in fact, I I think I'm right in saying that she hasn't actually been to an international event since childbirth where she's not come home with a medal. Um, so uh, at the moment within the cycling team, it seems, it seems to be... Uh, uh, certainly part of the recipe for success for our women in, in that programme. 
It's marvellous. And like you say, it's setting standards and that, that belief that perhaps was potentially out there that once you've had a baby, that was it. But they're, they're certainly proving a point, which is wonderful. Um, look, let's just look ahead to Paris, please, if we can, because we feel slightly nervous. Does this announcement mean that your medal tally in, in, in Paris might go down a little bit? Uh, you know, or, or do you feel in a good place in terms of the summer? We feel that we're in a really good place across all of our disciplines um, on track and off track as we go towards Paris. Um, you know, the, our women's endurance program that Laura's a member of have been uh, particularly successful over recent years. And over the last couple of years, without Laura being part of that, have continued to, to dominate worldwide. Um, and our women's sprint program have really come of age as well, which has been fantastic because we've we've been a bit short in that space since um, 2016. So to be able to have that come back has been fantastic. And as a reference with with Katie, just the, this weekend we actually managed to win all three of the women's sprint medals at the most recent Nations Cup in Hong Kong this weekend. Um, but yeah, we're pretty well placed in medals, and I'm. Um, very confident that the women that are remain within our women's endurance program will will just take um, this in a stride and they'll be in no doubt that they're going to go out and, and do everything they can to make sure we continue the legacy that the Great Britain cycling team has grown over recent years. This is great news to hear. Thank you so much, Stephen, for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.